Hello and welcome to another podcast with the series You Matter from Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. A podcast series that speaks about well-being and it's a podcast series that we are going to basically tackle so many different aspects and benefits of well-being and very, very specially of the fantastic programs that have been actually implemented within uh, Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. Now today we have Ishara now the Senior Vice President of HR at Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts and Nishara John Pili, of course, is the Manager of HR Projects. Ladies, thank you very much for opening the doors to us and welcome to another podcast series. Thank you, Chef. Thank you very much. Um, let me actually start with Ishara. Ishara, of course, Senior Vice President of HR and, of course, you've been with Cinnamon for a very, very long time. Um, what does well-being mean to you and uh, coming from an HR perspective, why is it so important? Yeah, so if you really look at uh, Shaq, it is uh, it is uh, integral part of every human being, you know, your well-being, whether it is per personal or professional, it matters to us as an organization because at the end of the day, it's people who make the difference in our business. So therefore, I think it is, uh, well-being is a very important aspect and at Cinnamon, it is a day-to-day -day thing. It's not only during Mental Health Day or any other day that we talk about well-being, but well-being is one of our values. So we really kind of do a lot uh, to ensure that our people feel uh, and it's part of everyday work. Well, this is something that we actually, uh, I think, spoke about offline uh, in terms of well-being and how it sort of correlates with HR. You know, many, many years ago, uh, well-being wasn't even sort of spoken about in HR uh, forums and so on and so forth. What changed? Why is it so important now? Yeah, because initially it was, you know, organizations always said, you know, if you have a problem, you just can walk in, you know, our doors are open. That's the only message that I've heard for the longest time. Right. But then uh, when things became difficult, I think, especially in Sri Lanka, with the Easter attacks and subsequently with COVID, and uh, when uh, the, way, the way we work changed, then we realized, uh, you know, there's a lot of people had, you know, a lot of uh, well-being issues like mental health issues, and things started really popping up, especially for cinnamon, we really re we realized that there is something that we need to do about this and that we really need to reach out to our people and see how they are doing. So, so that's how we started this whole initiative. Uh, so, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, as we go on, we can give you more information. As yeah, to yeah. Uh, Nishara, now, um, obviously, looking at uh, well-being, and looking at mental health, right, coming from a very sort of culturally knit environment we are as Sri Lankans, there's a huge stigma, right? You don't want to talk about it, right? And that I think even today is suppressing individuals who unfortunately are going through that, that stigma of, you know, should I speak about it, should I not? What will they think if I speak about it? How has, how has Cinnamon obviously countered that? What we first started doing was, we started introducing the topic, what is mental well-being and why is it important. Just like any other subject, we needed to do that introduction of what it is and define it to make sure people understand it is, it's just like taking care of your physical health, you know, you go to the gym, you do your diets, all of that, it's just as equal as important. So I think we gave that introduction to everyone and one of our learnings was, you we, we initially, I mean personally what I thought was, oh that kind of mindset was more in the rural areas, like you know you'd see that in different parts and Colombo is more modern and you know that's how in Colombo we are more, how do I say it? Outgoing. Outgoing, so right. I thought we would be more tech savvy or not tech savvy, sorry. Mm. We are more savvy with such terms. We can be tech savvy also. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is we are more savvy with, you know, uh, well-being and mental well-being and all that. But even in our office, I realized there are people who are still very backward in that way. So the more we introduced what it is and made it simple and made people understand that it's not limited to uh, uh, age or to a level or whatever it is. We all have similar issues. We all need to talk about it. That 
really helped carve the way for us. Now you're pushing, I, I mean, I, pushing might not be the right word. Uh, you are introducing the initiatives to the colleagues working here and of course in uh, the conglomerate, so to say. Um, but there would have been some sort of pushback. Definitely. Talk us through that. Um, again, people didn't understand why we were doing it. And a lot of people, I think, thought it was, oh, HR is trying to do just another tick box exercise. Right. And I think today we always try to remind people that it's not a tick box exercise. We really do care. You really do matter to us. Right. So we, I, now we have come to a place where people understand, okay, you know what, this is something serious. They do care. They want to hear us out. It's not easy. It's, it's a continuous journey. And I don't think there'll ever be a state where well-being is going to be perfect at Cinnamon. It's always... You'll have it, the people will have the ups and downs and we'll also have hits and misses with some of our initiatives. But I think people now understand that there are, there are initiatives, there are ways they can communicate through different things. Uh, we, have, we have now a colleague assistance program, literally therapy. So if you want to talk about anything personal or professional, we have help. So you can, and you can make it, con it's obviously 100% confidential, but if you want to, you know, make a booking and go and make an appointment and go and speak to, speak to her, you can. But if you want to keep it completely confidential and really seal your identity, you can do it on call. So we have all those options. We have little things like mood cards. So, you know, we have said it's fine to feel frustrated or stressed. It's fine to feel loved. Uh, if you do feel that way, just, you know, go and validate your feelings. We all feel that way. So I think we've made sure people understand that we are with them in this journey. So that's how it has kind of come to this point. It's nice that you obviously brought that up in terms of the fact that to ensure the, the, the whole idea that you are with them in this journey. Shara, now obviously being a senior vice president of HR, being a part of Cinnamon for a very, very long time, um, you were also one of the stakeholders in terms of, you know, initiating you matter. Um, it's... It's great when you basically are sitting on top and letting people know what the initiative is all about. But you personally, what are the insights that you've obviously taken from the You Matter initiative? Because I think that's also really important uh, before you decide to let people know this is great for you. Has it been great for you? Yes, it has been. And if you really you want to know, I myself go to... Uh, you know, talk to the therapist, uh, you know, at least once a month. Right. I would go and I'll sit and talk. And so I think people see that because it's not only for a certain level of, you know, it's not for us, it's not only for you is not what we want to really establish here. Every one of us have our ups and downs and sometimes we all need someone to talk to. Right. So, yes, I think it's from the top to... Uh, every level we encourage people to go use these facilities and make sure that they feel better. So that's uh, part of this whole initiative and I'm sure that people have, as Nishara said, it, uh, they are uh, kind of embracing this. And uh, we see a lot of positive outcomes because of these programs. So you feel uh, y you and the stakeholders in your level obviously also using the facilities that are available for well-being, uh, your colleagues are warming up to the whole process and they feel like, listen, if my boss is doing it, I don't think it should be a problem with it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And also more in corporate, we see the people are kind of, they don't think twice about going and meeting our therapist and talking to her, or getting help. But in hotels, we have struggled getting this concept out there. We work with Sumitra for hotels, but we just started a few months back. But there is quite a lot of pushback because you know, senior people sometimes don't understand the value of the program and why people need to talk. They think, you know, hey, we, are, we are there, we HR is there. If anyone has a problem, they can come and talk to us. But it is more than that. And if people need uh, space and a, you know, a safe space to go, and speak and maybe uh, you know clarify certain things is something not understood by everyone and so in a sri lankan context it is uh, it is bigger in the hotels than in especially in cinnamon right. bigger in hotels than uh, corporate because corporate i think in the last 3 years with all what we have done people have realized that they have a, 
a safe space here in Colombo and uh, you know they can go to any of the initiatives they can use any of the facilities we have to come out and talk about it but in hotels we are just getting into it and we are pushing uh, that agenda but it is going to take a little bit longer Shaq. Yeah, Nishara, on, on that on that subject, now obviously uh, the program is very well sort of laid out at corporate, very well laid out at your head office and, you know, in Colombo, so to say. Um, the stigma, I believe, maybe to some level has been sort of addressed, but I think you have a thicker wall when you actually head out of Colombo with all your hotels and resorts in different parts of Sri Lanka. Uh, it's a completely different ball game there um, and I don't, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure the initiatives will have to start being tweaked looking at individual areas. So even with our colleague assistance program, here we quite went head on with one-on-one -on -one sessions therapy. But there we realised you can't do it that way, so that's why we're partnered with Sri Lanka Sumitra as well, where again we have decided, okay, we're going to have these uh, group level sessions to introduce what it is, why is it important and really uh, it's going to be a series of those kind of sessions so that people feel comfortable with who they are, why, with, why they're doing it and especially when it's something that's coming from corporate they think that we are just trying to you know listen to to get to know what they are thinking and what they are doing to you know get we are like out to get them right. so we need to build a relationship with them as well um, and like Ishara said the leadership buy-in is a big big part of the whole process right and uh, we've done we've started with a few properties uh, some properties because I would say the leadership was not that they were negative towards it but they were also still uh, trying to understand the concept so that 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 came through with the program as well and with another property we saw the leadership really into it and they were really buying into it and they had done their own research so when they when we introduced it at that property the response from the staff was just incredible and even if the manager was there they didn't have any problem in speaking up they were very comfortable because they knew okay our GM is one of us right so it was great to see so it's uh, what I've what we've learned is every property has its own uh, own little ecosystem going yes. on yeah so yeah. how they how they re, how their relationships work all that is very different so right now it's not a cookie cutter approach right. every property has we have to work on it slightly differently right and so we are taking our time with it because like we said it's not a tick box exercise for us so we are fine to take it in the pace that we are going in just as long as it really serves the benefit of the people now you've rolled out this initiative to some of your properties, I believe, and I'm sure it's going to take some time for you to uh, roll it out to everybody else and see proper results might actually, you know, would take a fair amount of time, right? But what have you seen so far, though? The response rate, how they uh, address, how they speak to, even how they respond to the facilitators in itself was a good understanding of them, of how they uh, understand the topic. Uh, we were actually at um, Cinnamon Wild uh, when we had the last session and some of the chefs came and spoke to me because I had to stay there afterwards, stay the night and then they came and spoke to me and they're like, you know, I, I had a personal issue at home with my child and you know how she's addicted to social media but you know, I, after this session I was able to have a chat with my wife and now we're going to do this, this and this but we never thought about it, it's so easy. So. And even for him to come and have that conversation with me, you know, that relationship that he had formed with me in itself was proof that it's working. And of course, like just the engagement between the teams and the, the relationships they have, be, they, were going, they are going to create between the leader and the team would be a good indicator. Shara, you obviously deal with lots of HR related work with the resorts itself and uh, have certain well-being issues been escalated to you? Yes, it, it has been and also uh, we have the zero tolerance policy in terms of you know making sure that we safeguard our employees. So in that sense also there are a lot of things which has get, got escalated. So I believe that uh, the new initiatives of having you know, colleague assistant program and all this is going to kind of reduce that uh, escalation because I think at the property level they will be able to handle most of these issues. 
Yes, so when, when it has done, we have addressed it, but it has taken a long time when it comes to cooperate and by the time it comes to cooperate, a, a certain time has uh, lapsed, so it was not instant solution sometimes. But now, I think with people understanding the value of it and working towards it, I think it will be more kind of meaningful and good for our people. Fantastic. I mean, the initiative is just absolutely brilliant and I need to congratulate Cinnamon and of course uh, the management and the team behind obviously implementing these initiatives. So I'm sure uh, there are more actually that still haven't been rolled out, but it's still basically coming out. How does that process work? Do you master one and then you roll out one or then how? Or do you just start rolling it out? Uh, so basically, we they work simultaneously, but we have a rough understanding of okay, these are the issues we want to address. For example, we right now a lot of people have been telling us, and we understand it as well. We have a lot of meetings. We love our meetings, so we are trying to figure out okay, how do we sort that? But at the same time, we have all our other initiatives that are rolling as well, from Anagram, Lunch and Learn. So it's a bit of a slower process trying to just master how we're going to address it because everything has to have a proper solution. It can't be just done ad hoc. Right. So we take a little bit of time with the uh, curating the exact concept of it. But when it's in the execution stage, we make sure we everything is running at the same time. There's no, just because Anagram is going, we don't do CAP or right. at right. one point right. everything is running. Ladies, fabulous, wonderful to actually uh, speak to both of you to understand more on the well-being aspects of cinnamon hotels and resorts and of course dive more uh, deeper into the You Matter initiatives. Um, of course, this is for World Mental Health Day and it is a great initiative that uh, you have rolled out for your colleagues and I sincerely hope lots of corporates out there can pick up from what's been done here and start obviously using certain things, I suppose, in their corporate um, uh, environment. But um, lastly, before we uh, say our goodbyes, what message would you like to share with your colleagues and uh, everyone listening uh, to the podcast series on World Mental Health Day and well-being? So, Sharif, we start with you. Yes, so the message is that mental health is a everyday thing for us. We, it's not, you know, we don't want to make it uh, as if it's only on that day that you need to talk about it. Uh, for us, uh, as I mentioned earlier as well, well-being, compassion and uh, inclusivity being part of our values, we would uh, continuously work on these uh, areas where we would want to make our colleagues feel uh, comfortable to come up and talk to us or talk to our therapist or, or uh, you know reach out if they need help so that's the message I want to say at cinnamon uh, it's not a one day thing but it is a continuous journey and we are really really keen to make sure that our employees feel uh, you know they feel engaged and also being part of this whole journey and we make them feel at home, at work as well. So this whole thing about balancing work and life is something which is to an extent is not possible. Right. But at the same time, what we want to tell people is take your time. You know, if you feel that you are uh, becoming stressed or if things are really kind of even at home or even at office, you know, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to think through if it's okay to ask for help. So that's the message I want to give everyone to. And, and you you really believe in the open door policy. It's not just a, it's not yes, just a phrase course. anymore. Of course, it is. I don't even want to mention that. Right. The doors right. are actually, there's no doors. You can really walk in <laughs> anytime. Uh, thank you. Nishara, what, what would you, I mean, you, you, you're also working very closely uh, with uh, the other stakeholders to roll the programs out. What would you like to actually send out as a message? Um, we may have all these beautiful initiatives, but if you don't accept it and if you don't take it on as your own, there's no point. It's like even in an airplane, they say, right, first you need to put on your oxygen mask before you help anyone else. So my message is first help yourself, take care of yourself, and then you will be an inspiration to anyone else around you. Thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us on this podcast. Thank you so much for inspiring lots of individuals out there. 
and we wish you all the very best to all the initiatives that obviously are rolling out for the hotels and resorts and we sincerely hope there are lots of uh, other corporates that actually can pick this up and assist their um, colleagues and their employees and of course making sure that everybody is in a happy place, so to say. <laughs> All right, so we've got more coming up uh, courtesy of Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. It, of course, is the You Matter podcast series for World Mental Health Day. We're going to be speaking to some fabulous guests along the way. We're going to speak to individuals who've benefited from these initiatives that have actually rolled out courtesy of Cinnamon Hotels and Resorts. Till next time, have yourself a wonderful day.